Oh, there it is. 160 horsepower in a box. So this is our SPT engine. This is how it arrives. Uh, I had been cleaning parts. So these are all the parts that come off the engine that you have to reassemble um, and you redo these. So I'm going to start building these components onto the SPT so we can get the Yamaha test run. So when you're going through these engines, it is imperative that you go through and clean everything. On this one, I've exposed all the cooling tubes on both sides, all the fins, clean nose. I took the pan out of the oil cooler. Um, I cleaned the screen. I cleaned all the ports. I'm reassembling this. This is actually where the oil comes in from the oil pump and it overflows waterfalls down into this area and then goes back in to the second pump, which then uh, increases pressure and that pressure then travels through your filter and into the block. All right, so when you get your new SBT engine, you know they dyno the engine. So I like taking a peek in here because the last engine I got had metal slivers all over it, all in the bag. This actually looks really good. I don't see anything, uh, but I'm just gonna take a peek in here and double check, make sure I don't see anything out of the ordinary because that last engine failed in about 30 minutes because the timing chain guide snapped. I found that the pieces of that all throughout the, you know, the extremities of the engine. So this is looking pretty good so far. You can see we have to put on the magneto assembly. That's in the front. Uh, we have to bolt all this on. We have to put the starter in. We have to put the exhaust system on. And we're going to have to put the gearbox on. Um, and we also have to put in the adapter for the oil filter. But it's actually pretty simple, pretty straightforward to put these together.
Okay, so I've got the engine done here. I'm gonna get one more hose. Uh, next thing I need to do, I've got a whole kit here with new clamps and I'm gonna go through and replace all the clamps on the hoses. I'm gonna pull the hoses off, inspect them, make sure that they're good. I'm also gonna go through all these ports here because these do have restriction orifices to balance water flows. Um, just make sure everything's clean um, and clear. So when I put this together, we've got a solid cooling system. Okay. So that didn't take very long. All the cooling circuits and also my oil vapor recovery circuits have new clamps. This is what I was referring to. This is how those clamps came off. So cheap insurance. I just uh, put in some marine grade replacements and I'll feel better about this when I'm done. Kind of hard to video as I'm doing this, but what I, after I dropped the engine in, I added my shims back underneath the, the motor mount feet. And I put all my shims back in and then I checked my coupling, but I've got the proper gap here and I played with the engine to get the gap and then side to side. And then I wound up putting a little bit more shim on the back feet to lift the engine up a little bit. Um, then torqued all those down and I'm just uh, finishing up thermostat connections. Um, they're the only clamps I don't have yet. I do plan on replacing these two. Um, this one back here especially, but I can get to this, no problem. Um, so I really want to get moving on this so I can get a test run. All right, got the wiring done. Starting to tidy up all my cables. Uh, got everything I could get plugged in, plugged in until I put the intake on, um, or before I put the intake on. A little note, I did take every you know these staggered bolts out of my air intake um so if you just take these bolts right here out the rubber adapter will stay with the engine on boats sometimes i've just snuck underneath of here and, and loosened these up when you can get underneath of there but on jet ski these are really difficult to get into so i put these on loose got them close put the in put the uh, intake on the uh, fuel injection and um, started all my bolts, made sure all these were oriented properly, and then came back in and tightened these one at a time. Now I'm going to put the um, air intake and fuel assembly on. Just making sure I have oil going through the system. So that's a no start condition. I actually held the throttle down. This time, we're gonna see if it actually fires. I'm just gonna put that there for now. So I had to get fuel primed up to the fuel rail. Took a little bit to get it started. Once this guy saw fuel, she fired right up. 